Hello everyone, welcome to The Highs of Life. As you can see, this isn't one of my normal videos. I'm not out adventuring, but I have been tagged by the awesome Mooster Outdoors um, to do these five best tips for beginners on hiking or wild camping video. So, if you've stumbled across this video and you are a regular hiker, this may not be the video for you. We are just covering the very basics here. Um, and just a bit of fun and something to do while we're going through this lockdown. But I have got notes. I do want to keep this pretty semi-serious as well, just in case someone does stumble across this video. It is going to cover some good tips for if you want to begin uh, hiking. I'm still getting my foot in the door with wild camping, so I'm not going to cover that area. Um, if you want to cover the best things for wild camping, I'd uh, suggest to check out some other videos. But for hiking, we're going to get through it on here. Okay, so tip number one from me is to start small, choose the trail that is right for your fitness level. What I mean by that is, you might have gone for walks before, uh, you know, you can regularly go in for walks, but when you go out hiking, especially if you're in the hills or the mountains, uh, the elevation changes are different. It's a lot different to just walking on a flat pavement. So what you want to do is choose the trail that's right for you, like I said, and review the elevation changes within that trail, if there is any. Uh, but just take small steps, go out and do what you can, and just have fun with it. Okay, so tip number two is familiarise yourself with the trail you have chosen. Now what I mean by that is, um, there's plenty of online resources you can use. There's Google Earth. You can go onto Google Earth, type in the area site where you want to go. Uh, and now you get a little man where you can put it down. There'll be little dots that'll appear. You can actually go onto those dots and look at the path uh, for where you've chosen to go. So check that and check the terrain. Obviously, it's a bit subjective there because with the weather, things can change. Um, if you know if it's been raining for a few days before, uh, parts that were sort of dry mud will obviously be very boggy. So you know you've got to use a bit of common sense as well. But the main thing you want to do is whichever area you go in, you want to be able to use an ordnance survey map and a compass, which we'll come to in a second. So the ordnance survey maps are all different. If I chose this one, for example, the Peak District. This is for the Dark Peak area. If we cover the Peak Districts here, I'm not sure if you can see that. That's the Dark Peak area, but you've also got the White Peak area. So if you wanted to go to somewhere like Buxton or around that area, this isn't the map you will need. You'll need to get the other map for the White Peak. But you can go onto the Ordnance Survey website. You can search in where you want to go, and it will give you the right code for the area you need. There are online Ordnance Survey maps you can look at. Um, and obviously you can get a rough idea of what you're doing, but for the area you're going, you need to take one with you. Um, and you can also download electronic apps like View Ranger. View Ranger is very good. It's got some very basic maps on there to start with, but you can pay a subscription. I think it's roughly 24, 25 pounds for a year, which isn't too bad if you're gonna be using it a lot. Um, and that can give you a very detailed route on your phone, all the path you're following, etc. But I would not rely on electronic devices which is going to be something I'll come to in a second. Make sure there's no paths that are going off the paths you're going on, which you could potentially get lost. You need to make sure you know exactly where you're going. And the main thing I want to get across in this tip, which is number two as well, is tell someone where you're going. Even if you're going with a friend, if you're both inexperienced, you need to tell someone roughly the area you're going to park and roughly the trail you're going to go on, what areas you're going to be, you're going to be in. Okay. So tip number three, what I just mentioned a second ago, is been able to use a map and a compass. Now, you don't have to be able to use it to the extent of being able to pinpoint an enemy like the Marines would, <laughs> but you do need to be able to use the basics of a map and compass uh, and know how to use it. So if you don't know how to use that, there are plenty of online videos on YouTube, uh, which will show you the basics. There's plenty of online resources. You can read some research. It'll tell you the basics of how to do it, which is all very good. But there are actually places you can go, uh, like Brecon Beacons, for example, the Lake District. You can go into online uh, websites and book in to do courses on map reading. Now, there's courses from very beginners all the way up to, you know, goal level. So it depends on what you want to get out of it. But what I would advise is, obviously definitely do the beginner course or learn the basics of videos. 
but you can never have too much knowledge. So I'd advise, you know, it's something to do. It's always good to learn those skills. Learn as much skill as you can in map and compass reading. Because even though I mentioned videos, uh, sorry, apps earlier like View Ranger, View Ranger is absolutely brilliant. A lot of people use it. I use it myself. Never had any issues. But it's always a backup. You need to have your map and compass as well. I know I keep mentioning the same thing, but this is something I need to get across to you, especially if you're a beginner, like I said. It helps Mate and Rescue stay available for people who have actually got major problems. Uh, if And a lot of these things could be prevented first, so please learn how to use a map and compass and don't rely on electronics. Also with your phone, you'll be noticed when you're out, you're going to be taking pictures. There's all this amazing scenery, all these wonderful things that you're going to see when you're in the great outdoors. You're going to be taking pictures, your battery's going to run low. Plus, if it's colder weather, then lithium polymer batteries run out a lot quicker than normal. So yes, you can take a power bank, yes, you can take your leads, but the point I'm getting across is do not rely on your phone, okay? Okay, so tip number four from me is food, hydration, and the correct kit. Now, it might seem like there's three in one, but I was given five tips, so I'm gonna throw these into one because they're all very important. Obviously, when you're out, you're gonna be exercising, you're gonna be sweating a lot especially if it's in the summer so the one thing you want to do is make sure you've got the right kit um, and don't load everything and the kitchen sink into your bag you need to try and keep have the essentials but keep it as light as you can because the more weight you've got on you when you're walking about like I said you're going to be consuming more calories your heart rate's going to be going up you're going to be sweating more you're going to be losing more fluids so you're going to need to consume more fluids now yes you can take water bottles with you uh, it depends on your fitness level and how much water you want to carry. It's uh, roughly one litre of water is approximately one kilo that it'll add to your bag. So you can get water in various types of ways. Obviously you can get water bottles you can put in you. Um, you can also get water bladders. If you don't know what they are, it's just like a big sort of see-through pouch that uh, some bags are compatible. You just stick the bladder in your pouch and you have like a tube come around. You just got a little straw, you can just keep sucking it there. It's uh, really good. But obviously if you have a two litre water bladder, it's going to add two kilos roughly to your bag. If you had a three litre water bladder, it's going to add roughly three kilos. So you've got to think about all these things. What you might see some people doing on videos, uh, and what I do myself, I do take some water anyway, but you can buy water filters. Now, these are very simple to use. You can either get ones called a soya mini squeezes, which I've got. Um, sorry, a soya squeeze, or I've got the soya mini. I'll put a link to the all this stuff in the description. Um, and I've now got a Catadin B3. Okay, so the Soya Mini is just like a little tube. Um, you have to filter your water, you have to get collect your water into the bag that you get with it. Um, always do it from flash flowing water, don't just get it from a random stream, you need to do it from the you know the, the waterfall part. It doesn't have to be a big waterfall, it's mean like the fast flowing water. Uh, and then you'll screw the filter onto that bag, you squeeze that into your bottle and it filters everything go out, viruses, cysts, you know, all the dirt that's in there. But that's good. But what I've got now is this Catadin B3. Now, as you can see, this has got the filter built into it. A link to this will be in the description as well. You can do some research on this yourself. I've got this in the uh, 600 ml bottle. You can get it in one litre. The reason I did not get the one litre is because this is very fast uh, at filtering the water. So. I can do two litres of water, you know, in a minute or two. It's probably not even that long. Uh, it's got a flexible bottle, so you can just fold that because it fits in your bag really nice. And basically, all I do with this is, like I said, from the fast flowing water, collect your water into there. It might look like, especially if you're in the, the Lake District, seems to be a bit clearer, especially in the Peat District, it might look like it's a bit dirtier because it's got a lot of peat uh, around the area. So. Put that back in, you don't do this, you get your water bottle and then you basically just squeeze the water into your bottle and you have nice fresh fills of water. And that's the way you can collect water on the go. But that's another reason why you need to have your map and do your research first to make sure you've got water sources on your route that you're going on. Also you want to take some food with you, you need to take uh, maybe some snack bars, maybe some sandwiches. Um, if you wanted to be a bit more exciting, you can always take a camping stove, you can sit and have the dehydrated meals. It's always good to pick somewhere with a nice view, you can sit there and have your food, 
you know, recharge yourself, have a rest, it's all good. And for gear, one of the main things you want to make sure you do is get the correct hiking boots. Uh, you need to get ones that fit you and also make sure you wear walking socks. Do not get brand new hiking boots and expect to go out for a, you know, a 10, 15 mile hike <laughs> because they're going to hurt your feet. You want to get them, do some small work, walks first, especially around your area, bed them in. Um, and they're definitely worth it. Don't forget they are what are connecting you to the floor. So you're on your feet a lot, that's what you need. Um, also the weather is gonna change a lot when you're out. So just because it's 26 degrees on the ground, if you're gonna climb Scarfell Pike, I've done it before and I've gone up, it's been four or five degrees at the top. There's a lot of people up there cold because they get caught out. So make sure you take all the right gear with you. Make sure you've got a waterproof jacket, hats, things in your bag, even if it's summer you never know what's gonna happen in the hills and mountains. Also, you don't just wanna wear a cotton t-shirt because that'll hold the sweat on you. You wanna get a wickening base layer first. Wear the wickening base layer. Uh, that might be fine if it's a summer, as long as you've got a you know, little jacket or hat in your bag, but otherwise layer on top of that. So wickening base layer first, even if it's the winter, then you can do your fleeces and your down jackets and things on top of there. Now, one thing which is very important is to take a first aid kit. You can get simple kits, which are more or less fine for most people. Um, you can get them from loads of camping shops or online, little little travel first aid kits. They've got certain good things in there. Um, and make sure you get the kit that's to your ex medical experience level. And the kit I use is this one. This has got a lot of stuff in there. It's a first aid kit and it's also a trauma kit. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here which I know how to use and you might not be able to get hold of because there's some military grade medical equipment in here. Um, so there's no point in you having the same stuff as what I've got and not knowing how to use it. You need to know how to use what you've got. So basic first aid kit, definitely. Plasters, compression bandages, things like that. Hopefully you'll never need them, but it's an insurance policy. Uh, and then you can also do medical courses if you want to learn how to do more things. Um, if anyone's interested on what I have got in there and stuff like that, and I want to know that on a separate video, just let me know in the comments and I'll happily go through it. Um, what I would say is, even if it's daytime, and this might sound silly, is take a torch with you, because you never know if you're out, you know, you, you could be out longer than you think, especially in these colder months, and it could start to get dark. You don't need to get a massive torch that's this long and all this mad stuff. Uh, you can just get something simple. This is by Olight. It's called an S1R Baton 2. There's plenty of reviews on this on YouTube if you search it. This is a very good light. I think it's a, a thousand lumens, it's very bright, it's got different settings. Um, so it doesn't take any room, it's really light. And also if you had a hat, you can also fit on the front of your hat like this and you can use it as a head torch. It's very good. But, you know, you can just always buy normal head torches like this as well. So definitely take some sort of torch in your pack. Okay, last tip, tip number five. Respect the outdoors. Never underestimate the mountains or hills. Like I said, it could look 25 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, clear as anything. Uh, normal sort of regular hikes in the countryside, not too bad. Once you start going into hills, and especially into some of the bigger peaked areas of the mountains, the weather can change dramatically. Uh, it could be clear, and then all of a sudden the cloud will come in, you could have hail, things that aren't forecast. You'll learn that mountains sort of make up their own weather as they go along, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So. Just be very careful, make sure you've got all the right kit on you. And the main thing that us serious hikers, serious campers do, which you want to put across, is leave no trace. If you pack something in your bag when you take it, you pack it again to bring it home. Even if it's rubbish, there might not be bins in the middle of the mountains, there might not be bins in the middle of the hills, but it's so annoying when you see someone having a can of Red Bull and they've just stuck it in between a hole in a rock. You don't want to do that. Take a carrier bag with you, you don't have to put it back in your rucksack. All I usually do is I'll put my rubbish in the carrier bag once I've had my lunch, once I've had a coffee, once I've done whatever I'm doing. I'll just tie that to my rucksack. When I get back to the car, there's usually a bin you can put it in, or if there's not, the absolute worst is you just bring it back home, put it in the bin at your house. It's simple as that. There's no litter on the floor then. We can all enjoy the great outdoors. It looks after the wildlife, looks after nature, and that's, at the end of the day, that's why we're all out. So, sorry if this has gone on a bit, but I wanted to put a few good tips across 
So I hope it's been helpful to some people. Um, the one I'm going to tag are the five people who can do a video on their best tips for either hiking or wild camping. All the links to these people's channels will be in the description. Uh, and people who are do tag, don't feel you have to do it. It's just a bit of fun. So I'm going to tag you anyway. If you want to join in, fair enough. If you don't, you know, it's completely up to you. So I'm going to tag Sean Explores, Simon Outdoors, Alex Rand, Anthony Johnson, and I'm going to tag uh, Kerry and Kat from T in Valhalla. You guys can have a go as well if you want. So anyone wants to have a go, feel free. And hopefully this lockdown will be over soon. Um, I've got another plan for a little video I'm going to put up, but hopefully we'll be back adventuring in our favourite locations and exploring new ones in the very near future. So if you are new to the channel and this was any help, please subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.